punk revolution. Oh, I hope you find some peace of mind in this lifetime. Because Kendrick Lamar has released a new album after five years. He's the greatest hip-hop artist of our lifetimes. He's one of the best rap artists of all time, blessing us, blessing us with multiple masterpieces that have fantastic, amazing rapping with beautiful sociological lyrics that blow my freaking mind and experimental free jazz. And he's literally the freaking greatest of all time. And he's released a new album. It's a double album. Ah, Kendrick Lamar. No, I love Kendrick Lamar. There's no, you can't get around it. He's, he's literally so freaking awesome. I don't have to give you very much of an explanation or an introduction, but he's got this new album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Let's just get right into it and take a look at his album artwork. Does anyone else see the brown and white and black composition and the shadows and the contrast and the colors coming together to make it look like it's a freaking renaissance painting with the, the, the crown of thorns, which is a reference to Jesus, but he has a gun in the back of his ass, which is a violent thing to have in your pants, but you have to have it to protect your family, who is in this crappy little apartment with the walls that look like they need to be repainted and everyone looks stressed out. I'm interested in this album artwork because it has an emphasis on the family. That's a kind of a new thing from Kendrick Lamar. I feel like most of what I've heard and, and you know, we've heard from Kendrick Lamar, you know, it seems to be a little bit more of a lyrical emphasis on society and, and race and politics and, and your life within the, the community that you're a part of. I mean, he's always had very personal and very well thought out lyrics, but to have at the forefront of the album artwork the family with the little kids. It's like, oh, this is gonna be a new kind of personal twist from Kendrick Lamar. And there is absolutely going to be a lot more exper explore exploration in this album lyrically about the family, so there's that. But, you know, this album is a double album. It's over 70 minutes long. It does venture into many different territories, subgenres of, of experimental, conscious hip-hop, jazz, and electronic kind of experimentation and stuff. Lots of territory lyrically. I could honestly spend a good 10 minutes per song on this mess. I can make this video an hour long. I'm not gonna do that. It's a Kendrick Lamar album. It's dense. Let's buckle it up. Let's just start with the first song, shall we? The opening track, United in Grief, really sets the stage for, well, let's just be real, an epic album. He's coming back saying, it's been a long time since you've heard me. I've gone through some shit. I'm ready to drop some freaking powerful epic knowledge on you. And I'm gonna give you this emotional, I grieve different kind of vocal delivery singing about going to therapy, like holy crap. It's the open, emotional, introspective Kendrick Lamar we love so much. On top of this incredible electronic experimentation, we got this this piano, this grand piano and in the instrumentation that sounds like doo -doo 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 -doo, like some like, you know, playing some like jazz chords. It's very clean grand piano instrumentation with some string sections that kind of come in and kind of crescendo, which is really beautiful. And then they have this like percussion that's real like electronic, like <laughs> electronics plus free jazz. To me, honestly, this song is like, am I about to listen to Radiohead's Amnesiac with Kendrick Lamar rapping on top of it because that could just be the very best album I've ever heard in my freaking life. It's an amazing phenomenal track. One of the best Kendrick Lamar songs I've heard. The way that song evolves and uh, it's it's really compelling vocal performance and the fact that like I said it's freaking it's freaking Radiohead's Amnesiac with Kendrick Lamar rapping on top of it and that just kind of buckles you in for like holy crap what the heck am I getting into this is going to be epic. And then we get to the next song N95. It does get a little bit more into some of a slightly kind of harder hardcore hip hop territory. A little bit more like kind of like trap influence. We got Baby Keem featured on that song. What do we got here? Well, N95, that's the name of the mask that everyone during through the COVID 19 has been wearing. And he opens up with this, this kind of weird, this lyric that's a little questionable. He says, We're back outside, but they still lied. I don't know exactly what he means by that, but I'm starting to get a little nervous because. Who's, who, you know, I, I know the CDC was inconsistent throughout the pandemic about kind of keeping the story straight about how to handle the pandemic, but I'm a little nervous here because he's, he's, he's kind of expressing this sort of questioning authority sort of thing, which is fine. You're absolutely allowed to question authority, but if you have a song that's called N95 that has the main hook is, take it off, take it off, take off the cancel culture, take off the fake woke, 
take off the foo-foo. He's kind of just repeating over and over, take it off, as if we're all wearing some sort of superficial bullshit that needs to be taken off. And I'm not saying this song is explicitly anti-mask. It might not be. I'm just kind of getting that vibe. Like, if you have an, a song called N95 that's making several critiques through it about your frustration at cancel culture, and then halfway, like about halfway through the song, you get to the main verse, and you just literally just give this whole spiel about how you're frustrated with cancel culture and you don't fuck with it or whatever, and the main hook of the song about the title N95 is take it off, and you're, you're obviously using the mask as a metaphor to take off cancel culture i don't want to read too much into it it's not explicit but i i am gonna be honest i'm getting a little bit of like a kind of anti-mask anti-cancel culture just a little bit of that like just a little bit of a kind of right wing coded song here which is fine it's just you know I, I it's kind of a weird twist after that amazing really introspective opening to go into a little bit more of a kind of hardcore hip-hop song that's that uh it does get a little bit more sociological but in a way that i'm not sure how to put my finger on it it's a little bit you know it's fine like i said this this album covers a huge array of a, a bunch of different topics lyrically that i really want to dive into so you know there there, there is that kind of weird vague anti-political correct political stuff going on, i don't like but he, you know he does have a song here like worldwide steppers which i think is actually Brilliant, because that song, what that song is essentially doing is it's combining an analysis of sex and Kendrick relation, Kendrick Lamar's relationship to sex and, and race and, and politics and systemic violence. These are really heavy topics that Kendrick Lamar somehow ties together really well, reflecting on his experiences having sex with white women and how that was exciting but he also kind of felt guilty sometimes doing it because he was thinking about his ancestors and how they were killed by white people and how he was almost feeling like he was those sort of sort of betrayal there but then there's also some excitement of knowing this white woman's dad is a cop and that kind of gives him the thrill of haha i had sex with a white woman and i'm getting revenge on his dad and then he has this really interesting moment where he's like whoa I'm objectifying women right now. What am I doing objectifying women and destroying their self-esteem just for my own ego to feel satisfied about the fact that I had sex with white women? I mean, it's a really, really thoughtful song that, again, like kind of combines in this whole analysis of everyone's hurting each other in this kind of systemic way. Really fantastic. Like, that's the Kendrick Lamar I know. And of course, we absolutely cannot not talk about Auntie Diaries. Auntie Diaries is not actually about his aunt. It's about his uncle who is a trans man. And this, I think, is really an interesting song here because it is a pro-LGBT song, a pro-trans song about the love that Kendrick Lamar has in his heart for trans family members and friends and how he's learned and grown over time, reflecting on how he used a homophobic slur which, you know, he actually says the homophobic slur in the song several times. I think that's fine. I think it makes sense in the context of the song for him to say it as a way of reflecting on how ashamed he is that he would say it. And it also is kind of dramatic and gets the point more dramatically across. You know, there's lots of debate over this song because of the, the homophobic slur. I don't really personally care too much because the context is really great and then uh, then uh he he is primarily referring to his trans uncle throughout the song as an aunt and his cousin using their dead name and using the incorrect pronouns and this has also led to a lot of debate because it's like okay well it's a mainstream artist who's releasing this pro trans song but you know maybe he's just kind of still learning because the song is about him learning about not to say the slur uh, and now he's using some dead names and stuff, and maybe it doesn't really apply to Kendrick Lamar because he's kind of singing to a specific audience that maybe this isn't really too relevant to. <sighs> I'm hearing a lot of slippery kind of excuses trying to say why Kendrick Lamar, it's okay for Kendrick Lamar to use the dead names because it's kind of an artistic statement and stuff. It doesn't really sit with me well. Maybe it's because I'm someone who just has it like deeply ingrained in me. Like it's just second nature for me to use like someone's correct pronouns and, some, and, and not to use dead names. But you know, if I'm hearing over and over and over and over again throughout this album, his criticism of cancel culture and political correctness, and then you get to this pro-trans song, and he's using incorrect gender and dead names. I think we should be. I, I think we should be open-minded that he's not necessarily doing it 
out of the goodness of his heart. I think it might be a little bit more feeding into his anti-political correctness, anti-cancel culture kind of spiel he's been doing throughout this whole album, because Kendrick Lamar is really famous. He's got like 30 people working on this album with him. Someone probably said, hey, just an FYI, you know, trans people don't want you to use their dead name. And trans people don't want you to, 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 to not use their pronouns correctly. Um, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe he was kind of moderating himself trying, you know, to, in order to get the message across better. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe he's purposely trying to create drama. Or maybe he's purposely trying to kind of feed into this, like, I'm tired of all these people who are canceling people for saying things they shouldn't say, so I'm going to say a homophobic slur. I'm going to say the dead name. I'm going to say the, the, the incorrect the incorrect genders. I don't know. It's a shame because it's a beautiful song with a really important message. Like we are so, de like even though it's not a perfect song, I'm still happy it exists because our country is so incredibly transphobic that any sort of demonstrating to the world, like, hey, here's the basic message that we should love trans people. Like that message is so simple that even if he's not gonna do it 100% properly, I'm just so happy it's at least getting out there. I'm just a little bit, I, I just feel like a lot of people are giving Kendrick a lot of leeway for the imperfections in this album, coming up with excuses that he doesn't know better, it's an artistic statement. I don't know, folks. I think he does know better, and I think we should be open to the possibility that he was purposely crossing the line for some sort of beliefs that he has about maybe he personally doesn't think that using the proper pronouns are all that important because that's kind of what people who complain about cancel culture a lot think i don't know and another song that's frankly phenomenal with the instrumentation and the lyrics and vocal delivery and everything that also is a bit controversial here is mother i sober because this is a really really personal song about sexual assault and molestation within the family within the community and how it's destroy it's generational trauma within the black community of a lot of people who are really hurting because they are all holding these secrets and holding the tr it's, it's It's true, you know, across the entire world, but Kendrick Lamar is focusing on the black community. It's really a painful thing. And in the end, it has this kind of moment where he's like, you know, the, the, there's like, you know, someone who comes in and says that the generational curse has been broken because he's singing about trauma being passed down from generations from sexual assault. It's a really heavy thing, really powerful, but again, kind of like with Auntie Diaries, it does feel a little bit disingenuous because there are multiple songs on this album where Kodak Black, who has been charged with sexual assault and has other accusations against him for multiple shitty things, is featured on this album twice. I'm tired of people making excuses for Kendrick Lamar on this album, like lyrically, like, I don't know, man, like, Again, like Kanye West, a classic example of like, you know, a, a, a brilliant right-wing rapper who railed against cancel culture and then featured some a, 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 a sexual predator on his album. Kendrick Lamar maybe is doing the same thing here. I mean, he's, like I said, it's kind of, I'm just picking up a lot of like vibes from Kendrick here that I'm like, I don't know, man. Regardless, like, uh, you know, just get the whole, like, right-wing, left-wing political spectrum out of your head. Just, it just feels like I don't trust you. I don't believe you that you, I, like, you, it's hard for me to really soak in this narrative about breaking the generational curse of, like, I mean, no, it feels like a real, like, pretentious pat on your back that you broke the generational curse of sexual trauma and then also to feature a, a sexual predator on your album in two songs. It's just, ah, dude. It's just really like you, you it's and, and these are like the best songs like these are the best songs he's ruining with these questionable lyrics because i'm going to be honest with you guys like 70 percent of this album from like rich interlude until finally like auntie diaries i just feel like almost all of that is just incredibly <sighs> unremarkable a lot of these choruses ha have hooks that are just super super unremarkable like really just don't stick in your head whatsoever, but he's kind of approaching the song with a kind of a poppy kind of song formula that's sometimes real chill and real laid back. He'll have like a, like a three minute interlude that's like a lot of pretentious, you know, piano, violins, kind of all like as if something really important is about to happen and then it'll be followed up with a song that's like, 
kind of a snooze fest. And that's like most of the album. And I'm really digging, you know, in each of these songs, trying to find where are the good lyrics here? What's going on? And the lyrics are just, you know, kind of, you know, just generic lyrics about success and family and love and this and that. And it's like, this is good, but like, a lot of these instrumentations like sound like they're trying to mesh that awesome electronic experimentation with generic trap beats. And then Kendrick Lamar on top of it just sounds, he sounds kind of complacent. He sounds like he's not trying that hard. Like it, it sounds like these are incomplete songs because the inconsistency, the in inconsistent is an understatement. If you're listening to this album from start to finish, like like that's the that's the thing is like the majority of this album is like literally like like the first five songs are like yeah 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 and then it's like I chose me I'm sorry I chose me I'm sorry I chose me I'm sorry. I chose me, I'm sorry. That is like the least appealing hook I have ever heard. He just sounds tired. The whole song sounds like everyone's like exhausted clapping. I chose me, I'm sorry. I chose, it's like boring lyrics, boring hook, like it's just so boring, just dreadful. And then the song just ends. Like, that's the end of the album. Like I, I listened to this full ass album just for it to end, like, just like, suddenly just, I chose me, I'm sorry. It's, that's like the ultimate complacency, like the ultimate Kendrick Lamar, I think he's got, he's, he's used to believing that every single thing he does is just amazing. You throw a little experimental free jazz piano and violins and then some lyrics about, I don't know, I'm having, what's the, you know, I'm having contradictions. And then all of a sudden he, you know, it's like a good song. I don't think so. It doesn't work every time on this album, dude. And so really you have this long album that I feel like only like 25 minutes, like a, like a third of this album at max is like really great. And then a lot of it is just like, I really don't want to listen to it. And then the insane hypocrisy of having a sexual predator while you're also s singing about how you're fighting against generational trauma of sexual abuse. Can I be honest? This album is kind of a, a kind of a load of crap. It, it's like so frustrating because you hear the brilliance come through. Even even the bad songs occasionally have like little moments of brilliance, like a cool beat change or a cool verse or some sort of weird triplet rapping rhythm or something that's appealing. But so much of it is just so has nothing to say, and when it does have something to say. It's got its contradictions, and it's just sloppily delivered. I don't really want to listen to this album anymore. United in Grief, which is my favorite song, and I kind of don't even want to listen to that because it just gets me so excited for an album that doesn't even exist. Auntie Diaries. I don't know. The fact that I have a skepticism in the back of my head that he's intentionally misgendering for the sake of causing controversy because he has this, this frustration against cancel culture, that kind of freaking ruins that song for me too, even though it's a fantastic song. Mother I Sober. Can't really listen to that either. I went there, I don't know. There's some, I just like, why'd you have to have COVID have Kodak Black on it? I think we should just be a little honest with ourselves. Lots of fantastic, brilliant, usual Kendrick Lamar genius throughout this record. But as a whole, I don't know. I don't, I, like, there's this, like, there's one important thing. There's in one really important thing to every album, no matter how much you analyze the lyrics, no matter how much you analyze the experimentation and every, uh, the innovation, no matter how much you slice and dice it and try to give every, the most generous interpretation of every Kendrick Lamar lyric, there's one thing for every album that's just so important is, do I enjoy listening to it? This album, I actually just kind of don't. So I'm going to give this a 5.9 out of 10, which hurts because there are times I'm listening to this. I'm like, oh my God, this is a 10. You're not in grief. And then there's like a good, like literally 45 minutes of this album. I'm like, why do we, is this another interlude? Is this an interlude followed by a slow song that's boring as fuck and then a, another pop rap song that has a boring chorus followed by another interlude that's just dicking around on a piano followed by another boring song followed by a song about, I don't know, Jesus Christ. <sighs> so yeah, I just don't like it. I just don't like it. It just feels, it just doesn't feel well thought out to me. 
it feels a lot of these songs feel rushed and then there's like a, there's a, there's like a, there's plenty of flashes of genius throughout this whole record even within every single song there's going to be some genius that it feels really hard to give this album such a low score cuz you just but like literally i just like really have not and i really have not enjoyed preparing to review this because i don't like this album so that's all i have to say folks kendrick lamar still a genius this album is also at the very least interesting. I mean, this has been a long review. The fact that it's worth all this conversation and attention, I think is in itself a redeemable quality. It's worth a lot of thought and a lot of conversation. I just don't like the end product. and I don't like listening to it. So that's really the bottom line. Thanks for watching. I hope Kendrick Lamar fans aren't too mad at me. I gave my honest opinions, 5.9. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Please like, comment, subscribe, punk revolution. Now.